Hi guys, welcome! How are you guys doing? I hope you guys are staying safe. In this video, we'll take a closer look at the MVP build for Range Physical Attack Doram. The Doram race has gained popularity not only for their excellent farming skills, but also for their incredible strength against MVPs, whether in the field, Endless Tower, Oracle, and the Natus Tower. They have the ability to dish out very high DPS and survive the damage from boss monsters. The MVP build for Physical Attack Doram is quite similar to the farming build we've discussed in the previous video. I suggest watching the farming video first which I've linked in the description box down below. In this guide, I'll introduce the adjustment you need to do with the skills, stats, runes, equipment, and cards which are more catered against minis and MVPs. I'll also be discussing some useful tips to ensure that you can dominate the MVP board and clear your weekly instances with the Doram Physical Attack MVP build. Alright, without further ado, let's begin. First, let's discuss the recommended skills to get. For the Doram Warlock skills, it will still be the same with the farming build. We have level 10 Soul Bead for more HP, level 10 Soul Strike for a slight increase in damage, level 3 Stealth and level 5 Stoop to unlock level 5 Jump Form ability, and for the remaining points, just max out Stoop to level 10 and Stealth to level 5. Next, for Spiritualist, these are the skills we need to take. As a prerequisite for Lunatic Carrot Pound, we have level 3 Pick a Peck, level 5 Curled Beetle Charge, and level 3 Tarot Trauma. Next, as a prerequisite for Cat Mint Powder, we would need level 3 Kiwi Stock Gun, level 1 Kiwi Root Stock Twining, and level 1 Cat Nip Meteor. Next, for the support skills, get level 5 Fresh Shrimp, and then level 10 Shrimp Swamp for higher attack stat. And lastly, get level 5 Meow Crowd for additional HP when you have mercenary cats in your party. Even if they're already expired or dead, they will still grant HP as long as they're not kicked out of the party. As for the remaining 6 points, just put them at any skill of your choice. An option is to get level 5 Tuna Steak, but only if you have Fresh Tuna Class S Strewn with a third line activated, as it will allow you to heal yourself. Another option is to get level 9 Fresh Shrimp. But don't expect a high heal amount since the amount of HP it restores is based on your magic attack and int. Next for the summoner skills, we have Level 10 Lunatic Carrot Pound which will be one of your main damaging skills against MVPs. As mentioned in our farming build video, LCP will only deal critical damage if you have the Life Burst Class S rune with a third line activated. But you can still achieve huge damage even without this rune. Then get level 10 life power for 10% boost and max HP and attack. And lastly, get the following as prerequisite for Meow and Meow Grass. Level 5 Catmint Powder, level 10 Earth Power, and level 5 Meow Meow. For Job Breakthrough, you may allocate the additional skill points on the following. Level 15 Lunatic Carrot Pound for higher damage multiplier. Level 20 life power for 20% boost and max HP and attack. Level 5 Hiss as a prerequisite for Formidable Meow Level 1 Night Vision to unlock Cat Sight Level 5 Cat Sight for plus 10% Ignore Def And lastly, we have Level 9 Cat Mint Powder to further reduce the movement speed, attack, and magic attack of enemies. And lastly, for Animus skills, we have Level 1 Formidable Meow to unlock Savage Soul Level 10 Savage Soul which will be your main damaging skill along with Lunatic Carrot Pound. Similar to LCP, this skill can crit if the third line of the Life Burst Class S rune is activated. It has high burst damage perfect for achieving last hit. Next, get level 20 Life Soul for a significant increase in damage based on your max HP and also to help in HP recovery. Then get level 5 Meow to unlock Meow Grass. And then max out Meow Grass to level 10. This skill is the reason why we allocated points on the Earth skills. Placing Meow Grass on the boss monster reduces its death and M death by 30%. That's why you just need to have 130% Ignore Death Max to deal optimal damage. Although you can place two Meow Grass on the ground, its effect won't double. Meow Grass also gives a buff which increases your physical and magic damage reduction by up to 10% when inside the area. Then get level 1 Dried Lifesaver Fish for immunity to death blow which is very useful against MVPs with one-hit kill skill like the Fire Lord Kaho and Archangeling. 
Next, max out Soul B to level 20 for more HP. And then for the remaining 3 points, you can put it on any skill of your choice. Lastly, from drop level 61 to 80, you can only unlock points in Force Focus for higher HP. Next, let's discuss the recommended stat distribution. The most important stat to max first is Vit. Not only does it improve your survivability but also provides a significant boost in damage due to the Life Soul passive. Next, if you already have the Life Burst class S rune with the third line activated, you need to put points on Agi. Higher crit chance means higher damage for LCP and Savage Soul. And lastly, allocate the rest of the points on Dex for higher attack. However, if you don't have the Life Burst rune for triggering critical hit, then you should max out both Fit and Dex Verse and just put the rest on Agi. Next, let's discuss the most important runes to get. For the Acer Monument runes, it is very similar to what we've discussed in the ranged physical attack farming video. These are the core runes that will help you deal high damage. But aside from these, you may also get the following auxiliary runes. No entry runes for controlling mobs especially in Oracle. Neutral damage percent runes for MVPs and minis with no elemental advantage. And Cat Mint Powder Slow which reduces the enemy's attack speed. As for the advanced runes, prioritize getting the Life Burst Class S rune with a third line activated. As mentioned previously, this is the rune that can trigger critical hits with LCP and Savage Soul, and thereby increasing your damage by 1.5 times. This is also the only source of critical damage increase for Doram's animal skills, so you'll need a high percentage in the first line. Sharp and critical damage percent in chance won't affect Doram's critical damage output. Another important rune to get is Seafood Pond Class S rune, which grants the use of the skill Shrimp Pond. This is a great support skill that grants healing, damage increase, and reduction in damage received. But do take note that to receive the buffs, you need to touch the seafoods moving around the pond. An alternative to this is a fresh tuna class S rune with a third line activated. This can let you heal yourself using tuna steak. This is a good healing skill for Doram since the amount of healing is based on your max HP. And for the last slot, you can place either the Savage Assault class A rune for improving the damage and reducing the cooldown of Savage Soul or Mentha Growth Class S rune for improving your survivability in the battlefield. Up next, let's dive into the recommended equipment set and cards. In general, the gears and cards for the MVP build are just the same with the farming build. It's important to aim for at least 130% ignore death as most of the new MVPs have high ignore death stat. And then prioritize items that give pen, HP, and damage. Attack is our last priority since HP seems to have a bigger influence than attack when you have maxed out Life Soul. For the weapon, use a high refine Fine Pink Fox Grass for higher LCP and Savage Soul damage. As for enchantment, you should aim for either Morale or Arc Forked Enchant for increased ignore death or ranged physical attack respectively. As for weapon cards, just use two Minoris cards with or without the inside effect. But of course, activating the insight effect with either the Gotcha Hedra Abyssal Cry or a plus 15 the Chosen's Gown should be prioritized. For the offhand, you may use the Rasa Bracelet for more Ignore Death. However, if you already have 130% Ignore Death stat without Rasa Bracelet, then the Niles Bracelet would be suitable alternative as it gives range damage. Aim for Armor Breaking 4th Enchant which grants physical penetration. For the offhand slot, you may place cards that increase damage to certain elements by 5%. However, if you don't want to switch cards, you may use the Agent of Love card. Or if you have high budget, then use the Anubis Star card for plus 5% damage to all races. Next for the armor, a plus 10 God's Blessing is the most cost efficient as it gives high percent HP. But if you have budget, then a plus 15 Lazy Meow Cat would be the best option. If you already have the plus 15 The Chosen's Gown, you may also use it as it can trigger the inside effect of Minoris card even without the Gotcha Headwear Abyssal Cry. Aim for Morale 4th Enchant for increased Ignore Death, a high percent HP stat, or a high percent PDI. As for armor cards, you may place either a Monarch Star card for additional Ignore Death, or Pekka Pekka card if you can already achieve 130% Ignore Death without Monarch Star card. 
For garment, the only option is the Ancient Cape, ideally at plus 12 and max tier for more ignore death, attack, and HP. As for enchantment, aim for a high percent HP or physical damage increase stat. For garment card, the low budget option is Org Zombie Star card, and the high budget option is either an Eclipse Star card for more vit and max HP, or the Toad Star card for more dex and range attack. For foot gear, the Rune Boost would be a good option as it gives high HP and percent attack when upgraded and refined to plus 12. A suitable alternative is the Elegant Dorm Shoes since it is cheaper to refine and slot compared to Rune Boots. Similar with the Garment, it should also aim for a high percent HP or physical damage increase stat in the enchantment. As for foot gear card, the best option is to inlay a Ferris card for more HP. For accessories, the most ideal would be the plus 12 Dog Servant for high range damage. Other options are Ring of Immortality for more vit, HP, and attack, Survival Ring which grants high HP, or a tier 7 staunch ring only if you're using the chosen gown. For enchantment, just aim for a high physical damage increase stat. If you don't want to switch accessory cards, you may inlay either a Scarecrow Star card for 3% max HP and plus 5% healing boost, or a Zipper Bear Star card for plus 3% attack. But if you want to switch cards, then use any race or element damage modifiers such as Ultraman card against Brute and Demon Race MVPs, or Kaho card against Earth Element MVPs. Lastly, for the headgears, you may use those I've suggested in my farming video. Or you can use the following headgears which I think are better against boss monsters. For the head, the best in slot for farming and MVP build is a plus 6 Abyssal Cry due to its ability to easily activate the inside effect of Minora's card. It also gives plus 5% damage to minis and MVPs at plus 6 refinement. An alternative is White Knight Helm which gives bonus damage against MVPs and minis. For the face, the best in slot is Juggling Queen from this month's Headwear Gacha since it gives plus 10% damage to MVPs and minis. For the mouth, you may use Dream Weave Silk for plus 4% physical penetration. For the back, you may use One Eye Captain for plus 5% physical penetration and plus 5% ignore death. And lastly, for the tail, you may use a High Refined Summer Banana Split or White Flame from the Feast Gacha. Again, these are just the most recommended headgears. You may also opt to use other headgears I've suggested in the Range Physical Attack farming video. Lastly, here are some tips you need to take note of when fighting against boss monsters. First, for auto attack and manual skill slot setup, it depends on your preference. For me, I prefer putting Lunatic Carrot Pound and Savage Soul into auto skills. And then I just manually cast myself buffs which are in the first manual skill bar. Soul Bead, Shrimp Swamp, Curled Beetle Charge if you have the Life Burst Rune, and Hiss. Then on the second manual skill bar, I put in the skills I need to place on the ground. Shrimp Pond, Meow Grass, Catmint Powder, and Lunatic Gunner. I also put here Dried Life Saver Fish so I can just cast it before attacking. Before going into battle, I cast myself buffs first and then place Shrimp Pond near the MVP. I position myself near the middle to catch the seafoods and get the buffs. Then I place Meow Grass and Cat Mint Powder directly on the boss monster. After that, I cast Dried Lifesaver Fish and then activate the audit skills. Make sure to recast the manual skills on time for survivability. Next for the item quick slot bar, you can place the following items. Igrisol Berry for restoring all your HP, Honey for recovering 25% of your HP and SP, Panacea for recovering abnormal statuses, Flywing or Giant Flywing for finding the boss monster in the field, and Mount for mobility which is very useful in Thanatos Tower. You can also place butterfly wing and converters on the second item bar so you can change the element of your skills depending on the MVP you're fighting. Next, you can consume the following items before going into battle. For improving damage, we have Vit and Dex meals, Aji meal if you have the life burst rune, Satisfied feast which is the best among cooked foods when fighting against boss monsters, Controlling alloys depending on the element you're using, 
and attack always for a short boost in attack. You won't need precision stone since a fox grass weapon is considered as a staff which has no size penalty. For surviving death blows, you can also cook and eat call from ocean which is useful in Oracle Dungeon. Do take note that its anti-fatal effect does not work in Thanatos Tower. Next we have pets. In Endless Tower and Thanatos Tower, you can just bring pets that increase ignore death and pen for improving your DPS. But in some situations, it would be better to bring a boon or orc pet. You should also use a boon if you're going solo and don't have a priest to resurrect you. You can use Orc Wire or Orc Baby if you are in the field to taunt the boss monster, preventing it from teleporting. And for my last and final tip, familiarize yourself with the attributes and skills of MVPs and minis, both in the field and instances. A good grasp of the mechanics of killing the boss monsters and clearing instances will significantly improve your success. Alright, so far we discussed the skills, stats, runes, equipment, cards, and tips for the dorm range physical attack MVP build. I hope that this guide was helpful in preparing you for killing boss monsters, whether in the field or in dungeons. Alright, that's it for this video guys. Don't forget to like if you enjoyed watching this guide. If you're new here, I would love for you to consider subscribing by hitting the red subscribe button down below. I would love to have you back. Thank you for watching and see you in our next episode.